And uh, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your many mercies. We have seen the, the light of another day. And uh, for that, we are thankful that we can see it and uh, leaning on you, allowing you to lead and guide our lives. For we don't know how to go in or go out. Like David so many said, many times said in the book of Psalms. But Lord, uh, we are in your hands and we want to lean on you heavily. We don't want to trust uh, our own understanding or how we judge things or how things seems or how other people will interpret uh, what they see. Lord, we, we want to see you uh, guiding us and showing us the way that need, we need to go. Help us with this class tonight. Those things that we're going to study, Lord, that they'll be able to lead us uh, into a path of assurance and understanding and wisdom. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the sacrifice uh, that he uh, did for us on the cross. How he purchased our salvation with his own life, with his own body. And oh Lord, we don't have the vocabulary to express what that means to us. Be with us now in Christ's name we ask, amen. We want to take a, a text uh, from 2 Peter chapter one. We are going to use two, two verses and we are to, going to talk a little while, maybe uh, one or two classes, I don't know how many. We will see how we are led. Second Peter, the second epistle of Peter, chapter one, verses 20 and 21. And I remind you, if you have a question, if there's something that you want to share with us, please raise your hand and we will try to uh, accommodate you, okay? Second Peter 1 20, knowing this first, knowing this first. Now, first things are the most important. Secondary things, that's what they are, secondaries. As soon as we read knowing this first, it's teaching us that this is the utmost importance uh, for we need to know this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. That's very important, it's the first. And why? Because everything that we believe and everything that we hope to be and everything that we need in our lives is based on the fact that we are building on what the word of God says. And that's the reason why uh, the apostle Peter says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy or the word is really what it means came not in all time by the will of man, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we go back to the importance of the Bible and I want to make a little difference here. And I don't want to confuse you uh, with what I'm going to say, but there needs to be a little thin line when we say the Bible and when we say the word of God. 
Somebody said, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? I, I will share with you. But uh, the word of God, and to be specific now, this book that we have that is called the Bible, that contains the word of the prophets, the history of the world, the teachings, the example, the life of Jesus, our Savior, has been the foundation of those who call themselves Christians. And um, from the onset, I want to tell you that something that the Bible is not. The Bible is not the interpretation or the private interpretation of those who wrote. They did not interpret what was said either by God in the Old Testament or by, or by Jesus Christ in the New Testament. It was not their interpretation. Uh, I don't know if you ever have asked yourself in a time when there was not uh, the practical things that we use today to, to, to write things down, short hand, uh, tape recorders, how these men, how these men, especially Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, and John, were able to pin down the gospel of, 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 of Jesus, how were they able to remember, to know everything that Jesus said or did? Have you ever asked yourself that question? You have? Can you move your hair at least? No, okay. Well, yes, sir. But it is a fact, right? How were they able to remember? What if they remember wrong? What if what Jesus said was not really that, but they, they actually uh, interpreted? Like today, we live in a world that they are trying to sell us the ticket that everything is relative. It all depends on how you look at it. So that's why I bring this first point out. The Bible is not an interpretation of those who wrote it. According to verse 21, for the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And that's great. They were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's how they wrote. Now, how can we bring it closer? Let us go to St. John 14, 26. We can bring it closer because everything about Christ and about the teachings of Scripture are part of a miracle. In John 14, 26, he says, But the Comforter, the Comforter is the Holy Spirit, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and here he is. And bring all things to you, to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit did a work that many times we pass perhaps over too, too fast. And actually brought to their remembrance everything that he has said. 
there's no way that a man can be working with Jesus for three years with everything that he said and everything he taught and everything he did and that you can remember everything in detail unless there is a miraculous work. And that's what the Holy Spirit did. Not only he inspired the word, but he made it possible to be remembered so that, I, so that this man that we already read in Second Peter, moved by the Holy Ghost, were able to write, were able to write whatever had been said. So it was not their interpretation. Now we have perhaps some of us who are bilingual, uh, well, Spanish and English, and but there are people that have, they speak seven and eight languages. And you will know that they have Bibles and not every word is the same. So it's not the word, it's the thought. And we can see that in Spanish and English when we read it, okay? Because there are some words that cannot be translated. So what is translated? The thought, like an interpreter that uh, is interpreting uh, or translating uh, when somebody is preaching in another language. Not every time you can repeat verbatim uh, what the preacher uh, is saying because some things don't make any sense. So what you translate, you translate the thought as close as you're able. And that's something that's foreign to, to, to Christian people that have only learned to speak one language because they have one Bible and uh, they cannot understand that Bibles uh, have different words to bring it to the point that you can understand what he meant by saying that. And that it will not in no way uh, hurt the meaning. So God did not speak and then they interpret what they thought he meant to say because that would fall then in the hands of men. And it would not be a divine book but the interpretations of some men. And that's very important to the purity and the holiness of the word of God. Because all this is under attack and it's gonna get more uh, uh, furious and stronger as uh, time time uh, keeps going. In in Revelation, let me show you another. Uh, if you have your Bibles and you want to read, feel free. You do me a good, a great favor by reading. If you find it, Revelation ten verse four. Let's read verse three. Anyone? And he cried with a loud voice as a lion roareth. And when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now, seven thunders. Have you ever heard a thunder speak? But well, we're dealing here with symbols, right? Symbols. John says that When this angel spoke, he did it like um, as when a lion roars. And you know, the only, I don't know if you know this or not, it's not that important, you can go to heaven, no understanding it. But the only beast in the jungle 
that roars is the lion. Panthers don't, don't, don't roar. Cheetahs don't do it. Leopards don't do it. They make a noise when not roaring. And the only one who can actually roar is because the lion has a special, uh, I cannot tell you, it's, let's call it apparatus in the bronchial system, the, the lungs, and the way that his, his head is made, that it creates a roar that can be heard up to five miles away. Five miles, that's a long way. And what happens is when he's roaring, he roars, why? To let everybody, hey, I am the king here. Don't you dare to trespass my territory. And that's what lions do most of the time during the day. They just patrol. They just patrol around and the heavy job is done, but yes, by his wives, the lionesses. They are the ones who do the hunting at night. So he comes home like the king that supposedly he eats and he eats first. They cannot eat nothing until Mr. Lion eats the roaring of the angel. He roars as a lion roars, really high, intimidating, strong. And he says, verse four, sit the Mimi. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, as I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. And when okay. the- Okay, yeah. Um, I think that it is, it is enough. We can go farther, but uh, you know, let, let's, let's hold it right there. Um, when, Angel, when when uh, John heard the thunder speak, he was going to write what he heard that the thunder said. And when he was going to write it down, what was going what, what was he going to write down? Not only what the angel or the roaring had said, but also the interpretation, what he meant. And he was going to write the interpretation and God said, no, don't do it, seal it. Why was it sealed? Because at that moment, they did not need what the thunders said. Who was going to need it? You and me. And that's why we have a book that's called Revelation. It's the revealing of many of the things or most of the things of all of the things that John heard or, and saw. And uh, as the church has needed the light, then God has taken the seals to open the book so that church that needed that information to fight their enemies in that age could understand and be prepared. And this is very important because according to the word of God and in the book of Revelation, and as we keep reading, the book is already open. So we are living in a time of total revelation. Now we have to catch up with, with this because uh, we need to understand and this is why we have classes and that's why most of the time uh, we, we preach about certain things uh, and we must understand that there's a difference between a type of preaching that is an exhortation and a preaching that is teaching you. There's a difference and they're not the same. 
okay? Messages about being encouraged, messages of this and that, and different, so many themes um, in, in the Bible. But when there is a message, a doctrinal message is teaching you the mysteries, the Bible says, the mystery of godliness of which Paul wrote. So I thought I'll throw that in because sometimes you can hear a lot of a lot of preaching uh, that doesn't have too much understanding for you. It's not adding no understanding to you, but it's more a type of exhortation. Okay. So uh, these scriptures in Revelation 10 and 4 and John 14, 26 teaches us that no interpretation was uh, written by the writers. They wrote what they heard, but not their interpretation. So what is the Bible then? Well, the Bible is, do you want to say anything? What is the Bible to you? Andre, what is the Bible to you? I think it's a uh, more of an instruction, uh, like a manual. Like a manual. You know, it helps okay. us, I, I, you know, I don't want to hear. Right. Oh, the Bible to me is the word of God, because that would be like a children's answer. No, no, I'm not. Uh, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that no, 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 so, no. I'm, know, I'm, I'm not trying to get on your case, your okay, son. Uh, Brother Adrian, what is the Bible oh, to okay. you? Uh, en español. <laughs> no, English. Um, you can do it. <laughs> uh, for me, um, there the you are. Of God is um, the God will. The God? God's will. God's will. Uh -huh. okay. God's willing um, about uh, um, but everything. being humans. Being humans. Um, is, this okay, is you're doing good. Protocols. Manual. You're doing, it's, it's manual. It's um, a manual. Okay, a manual that manifests the will of God for men. All sí, right. Pero si es, oh, wow. es the path. Uh, es decir, es es los pensamientos de Dios también. Acerca del hombre, qué es el hombre, qué es la humanidad y qué es el universo. No es solamente la palabra de Dios, son los pensamientos de Dios escritos también. Okay, it's the thoughts of God. That's why he's saying the thoughts of God. I'm adding here the opinion of God about everything that has to do with eternal, even physical things. Okay. Um, Ricardita, what does the word of God how you look at the word of God. What is it to you? To me, it is. There's a lot of answers. And none of the answers are wrong because there are different things. Um, to me, I see it as, I agree with what everyone has said, but more of like history in a way, because it shows the very beginning of the world and then also the different stages of the church because you know how we're in the, we're in, like you said, in total revelation. So we see everything. We, you know, we, we should, we should see yeah. everything. Right. We should see everything from the very beginning to the very, you know, to what we know now. And I think of it as, as that, as the history, as the foundation, as what we can stand on when, you know, when everything around us may be telling us so many different things. It is the only thing that has not changed throughout, you know, throughout everything. And it has survived through generations, through centuries. And it is the only thing that has survived. And I so, think that- so, so give it to me in one word. What is it? Foundation. <laughs> there are no wrong answers. I say foundation then. <laughs> Foundation, okay, is history. H history enough that we can build on it because it's the only book that covers the history of mankind. All right. Um, 
uh, Jasmine, would you like to answer or not? No, I think everyone covered it. Okay. Sure. Joseph. Joseph? Yes, um, besides what was already told, I, I believe, or I see the Bible as um, a collection of, of um, historical events that are, or, or historical things that have happened um, and that don't contradict each other. They, because when the Bible was put together, it, it couldn't contradict anything. Um, so that's what I see it as. Okay. Mimi, Sister Mimi. Um, I see the Bible as a few different things. Um, I see it as a report, a love letter, and instruction. Good. Who has believed a report? Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. Brother Alejandro, what is the word of God for you? Uh, for me, the word of God is uh, comfort. Uh, and there's there's been I there's been times of, um, uh, in my in my journey where I've had um, a hard time sleeping or I had, I've had you know just especially in the beginning when I first got saved um, and I felt a lot of like attacks you know I felt attacked you know all the time and I always I always would lay the Bible on my chest and go to sleep and and I felt it like it was like a comfort and it was like a sword like in the it's out of it's, yeah, there were some people back in the old days that used to sleep with the Bible under the pillow. And um, so they could sleep well. I'm going to be honest with you. I can sleep with nothing under my pillow, even if it's the Bible. I need to have right. a nice pillow. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather keep the, the word of God in my mind. But listen, <laughs> the word of God can be soul food. Food for your soul spiritual yes. water when you are thirsty is spoken of as um, the bread of life right is spoken of as uh, that which will give you strength to face the challenges of life Sometimes when we feel fear, and uh, fear is real, it doesn't come from God, but it, it is, uh, fear is uh, an emotion. But the word of God can strengthen us uh, when we face fear, uncertainty, when it seems that the roof is caving in and the walls are getting uh, is are coming together, squeezing us. The word of God can be everything that you need in your life. Above all, is the word that will keep you safe, and that's very important because we are saved by, like the sister mentioned, the report. Who has believed our report? Go and preach the gospel there we have it there again go and preach the gospel he didn't say go and tell them about my miracles he didn't say go and tell them about all the healings that I did and go and preach say the word the gospel the good news and those who believe it will be saved so it has a saving effect in your life, deliverance. So we can say that the Bible is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, 2 Timothy 3.16. Anyone can read it? 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, 
for correction, for instruction in righteousness. There you have more things about the word of God. It corrects us, it instructs us, it rebukes us. All those things have the word of God. But it's, and it says all scripture, not some of them, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And uh, this is the only time that you deal with inspiration. And I have told you in classes before, I believe last year, that the word of God is the only thing that is inspired by God. The, 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 the Hebrew word and the Greek word for inspiration is God breathing out his power, his life. That's what he did when he, Bible said he breathed in, uh, in Adam's nostrils. And man became a living soul. So, and I have said this before. A certain book is not inspired. I don't care how good the, the poet was. And we appreciate all those who, write, who wrote. I think highly of everyone who wrote songs for the glory of God. But to be specific, no hymnal, no some book is inspired. If they were, we could preach from them. Okay. So since that's the way it is, it's necessary to be in contact with the source of that inspiration. Let me repeat it again. It's necessary to be in contact with the source of that inspiration. That's the only thing that is going to make it real in your life. If you read it, and you don't keep in contact with it, uh, you're not going to have much to show forth. There's an old, old, old song. When I was little, I don't know if you have it in English or not, but the song said, keep in contact with the Savior. The whole song was about keeping the contact, keeping the contact. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. Let, let us see what this says. I'm reading quite a few scriptures because I don't want to give you a foundation of my own. And since this is a class, uh, we need to check some things that we are sure that we're on the right track. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Okay. 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spiritual things with with spiritual. There you are. Continue. No, uh, you got verse 14. But the natural man, the natural man, receiveth not the things the of the Spirit of God. Okay. That's verse 14. Which is the reason why people say, I read the Bible and I don't understand it. This is the reason why. Because that person is in a natural state. And the natural man or woman cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God, which is the Word, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, 
because they are spiritually discerned. Neither can he know them. We have a lot of young men uh, in seminaries starting to be preachers and, and starting to be pastors and evangelists and even teachers uh, teaching doctrine in, in colleges, Christian so-called so Christian colleges. But there's something that we cannot uh, look uh, pass over. And is that if that person is not regenerated, if that person has not had an experience with God, if that person is not walking in the spirit, he cannot know the things of God. And he will probably repeat it and teach from a book that somebody else wrote. And, uh, and that's about it. But for a teacher or a preacher or an evangelist or a pastor to pass on to the people the true knowledge of God has to be by the Spirit of God. There's no other way. I don't care how eloquent an individual may be. It doesn't make no difference how well he can speak and communicate or charisma. It has to be done through the Spirit of God. That's how you're going to get it. So, as we think of the subject, that I don't think that I gave you a, a, a title. Did I give you a title, a subject? Okay, because we're going to be talking can the Bible be abused? That's really my thought. Can the Bible be abused? And we are going to talk a little bit about Bible abusers. Because you are not the only one who has a Bible. Okay. In most hotels in the United States, you're going to find a Bible in the drawer. Where the lamp is. The Bible. So a Bible is today still the best best well it is the best seller of all books in the world sometimes people don't pay attention to that but it, it is there's no another book that people buy more than the bible see the mimi i i had had my my hand raised for something else but i this is um this is a great lesson. I was thinking about something that I'd seen and it was called an atheist versus a believer. Okay. And this, um, this atheist, um, was being interviewed by the believer and the believer said, well, I'm not going to try and convince you that there's a God or anything. I, I don't really want to, but I can only tell you my experience he relays his experience, which isn't very deep. And um, the atheist brings forth this rebuttal, which is um, if you take any um, work of fiction or anything like that, any holy book and destroyed all of the words written, they would still, they would come back as something that was entirely different. But if you took any scientific test um, and, and proved those things through science, then they would be proved. Uh, and those tests would still react the same way. And people cheered or clapped for him because of his argument. Um, but I was thinking that still doesn't really make sense because there has to be a creator of those elements. Of course. There has to be a creator of those elements. And if that believer had any substance, he maybe would have turned to... Um, the scripture that said no scripture is for any private interpretation right. it's in, by the inspiration of god mm -hmm. so if god is the creator of all of this even if the bible were written right today it still would mean the same thing those True. scientific tests can be done away with True. god can't be right that's very good 
Well, I, I said last week that nothing produces nothing. And uh, that's one of the big uh, problems that the so-called science, there's a true science and there's a fake science. Those that speak about, you know, 150 million years and all this kind of stuff. That's fake, all that is fake. Uh, and and let, me, let me share this with you. I don't know, uh, somebody said, said that I'm old school. That means that I'm, that I'm old, really what he, what he was trying to say, that I'm old, very old. <laughs> but let me tell you, back in the 70s and 80s, there was a, a theory outside in the world that the cosmic, the cosmic dust that is in the atmosphere in space, falls in different places. Uh, in, in different places and when the American government decided to send a, a man to the moon, and this was in the newspapers, that's why I say that you never read it, but since I am old, 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 um, they figure out that when the astronauts came down from the, the ship and that they placed their feet on, on well, in the moon, that they will be at least sunk to their, to their uh, ankles in cosmic dust because of the millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of years, okay? But they were proven wrong. When the astronauts came out and they planted their, their feet in the moon, there was just a little tiny bit of dust, which proves number one, that our galaxy our world is young. And that's one of the many other things that I could bring out, but I, you know, I'm going to deviate from the, from the class. And I appreciate the, the comments of Sister Mimi. Okay, if in the moment of the interpretation, the inspiration of the spirit is not present. We will only stay with the interpretation that is faulty. And what a lot of people do is they invent their own interpretation, which is the worst. Not knowing what it is, is bad but getting the false uh, understanding or the false interpretation is worse because then you think that you're right. The other word you're ignorant. It's better to be ignorant than to be uh, falsely secure. I don't know if I said it right. Okay. If you know that you are ignorant about something well, you're gonna keep looking, but if you get the wrong interpretation and that's what you are here to, that's dangerous because you're not gonna change. You think that you got it and you don't. So whenever I have been asked a question that I find that I cannot clearly respond to, I tell the person I cannot answer you now but give me a few days and I'll get back to you because I'm not going to invent. I'm not going to invent uh, uh, an interpretation to escape from the question. If I don't know, I don't know. And I would not be ashamed because there's a lot of things I still don't know, but I'm working on it. 
Okay, Romans 11.33. Okay, Romans 11.33 says, all depth. I like this scripture. All the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, his ways past finding out. If anybody knew Revelation was Paul. And it seems that he got so deep in God that he came to the conclusion that the wisdom and the knowledge of God was unsearchable, just like his judgment and his ways. That's why I, I told you, I'm still trying to find out more. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Now, a lot of people, see, when you don't study the Bible, uh, and you don't have an agenda, but you, you want to be honest, people run to 1 Corinthians and say, well, we have the mind of Christ. Well, go back and read the whole chapter and try to get some understanding because if you have the mind of Christ, then we have two Christs plus the other million that are saying the same thing. Nobody has actually the mind of Christ. How unsearchable are your judgments? Okay, how deep are the riches of his wisdom and knowledge of God? Going after the knowledge of God. One time I preached two, three messages of knowing God. And a lot of people got upset, I think, because they say, you know, the, you say you know God. And, wow, you know God. You don't even know your wife, but real well, but, but you know God. Oh, you know your children. Uh, yeah, you think you do, but uh, you don't. But you know God. Wow. That's a very high, you know, declaration. You know God. Somebody said, what do you mean? Well, Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, he says, I keep going forward that I might know him in his sufferings, in the power of his resurrection, that I might know him with all the miracles that he did or performed, with the depth of his preaching and teaching, because Paul could go for hours. And I think that people say, well, that's why I preach for two, three hours. Yeah, but you're not Paul. You don't have that depth to keep me awake after an hour and a half. That's the most that I give you, one hour and a half. You tell me everything you have to say, and I'm giving you a lot of time, really. Because a lot of times after one hour, it's just repetition of this, the first things you say in the first 45 minutes. I so say, you're too raw when you speak. Well, that's the way that I am. And that's why you are in the class. Because a lot of people say things that don't make any sense to me. They never did, even when I was young. Okay, so the depth of God, the depth of his wisdom, the, ne the, the depth of his knowledge, unsearchable. What unsearchable means? Come on. Unsearchable. What does it mean, unsearchable? It means lacking the ability to be searched. It is impossible to find the bottom of it. Yeah, you keep, you keep, you keep searching and, 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 and you cannot find it. You cannot get it. Why? Because my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And my ways are higher than your ways. And you keep going up, and when you keep going up physically, 
you're still as far as you were when your feet were on the earth. This, this is what I enjoy about the word of God. That's why I feel secure with this powerful eternal word. And by the way, it drives crazy people who are shallow, but Matthew 22, 29, another scripture that we want to value. I'm still not getting to the good part because I want to, I want to put some nails on the abusers. The abusers are those who, who abuse the scriptures, twist the scriptures to fit their own end. Matthew 22, uh, verse 29, anyone feel free to read it. Jesus answered and said unto them, ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. You see, you err, you're wrong. No knowing the scriptures. You read the scriptures, but you don't know them. You talk about the power of God, but you don't know the power of God in your own life because you're still uh, in a box within the, the precepts and ceremonies of the law. That's what Jesus was talking about, these uh, religious uh, Jews. So I should leave it here, I think. Let's leave it here. Um, and we'll continue next uh, next Wednesday. For Alex. Yes, ma'am. Um, what was the thought that you said it's better to be ignorant than what? The having the wrong interpretation of things or the wrong knowledge of things. Thank you. Any questions? Do you understand the class? Very you good. got it. All right. Okay, well, let us uh, um, close the class with prayer and I will leave it open to you and just dismiss us in prayer. Father, as we bow our head before you in prayer, dear Lord, we want to say thank you, God, for this precious day of life. And we thank you, God, for this day that you've given unto us, dear Lord, this evening class that you've given unto us as well with Brother Alex and the brothers and sisters who are also here. But we have come here to learn and to take what has been given to us, dear Lord. And Amen. we just want to say thank you, dear Father. And thank you for your word. And we don't want to go out, dear Lord, being abusers, even with Brother Alex said, being abusers of the Bible, my God, but being knowledgeable and applying that to our own life and spiritually, my God. We come here in the name of Jesus Christ, bowing our head in prayer unto you, dear Lord, ending this day as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.